Chandra from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 728. Uh, we're joined by special guest Danny Espinoza, uh, a former MLB player. Now he's playing in the Mexican League. And then I'm joined by my one of my co-hosts, Vedant from Global Kid Media. So thanks for joining. And Danny, if, especially for you, thanks for joining the show. It's truly an honor. I've been watching your career throughout. And uh, obviously, you had a great major league career. And now you're transitioning in, into the Mexican League. So we're going to get to all that. But first, how are you and your family doing so far during the sub situation? Everything's been good. Uh, my family, um, we have maintained uh, normalcy in our lives. Um, I would say the toughest thing we're going through is probably right now with the separation with uh, me and my two boys and my wife mm -hmm. being gone and not being able to see them. My boys get into the age of understanding that I'm gone, you know, for a longer time. So I'd say right now, probably the toughest thing going on with us is really just the separation from family. This, you know, like I said, the first time that they're understanding dad's gone. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, before we get to the questions, I'm going to let Vedant introduce himself a little bit more. Uh, and then. Yeah. So I'm Vedant. I'm the 14 year old president of Global Kid Media. I've done 1500 interviews in the past three years and working to be that first kid on national TV as a reporter, host or producer, and hopefully inspire millions of other kids like your own that they can start young too. Cool. That's very cool. Yeah. So, so I'll let you start off here. Yeah, I mean, I just want to know for you growing up, but let's go all the way back to the beginning. Besides baseball, what were you doing? What other sports were you involved in? And where did you envision yourself? My entire life, my parents encouraged me to play every sport. It was never single sport. Actually, the only year that I did play baseball the entire year and not another sport, my dad said, we'll never do that again. Just, <laughs> you know, I... I think I didn't get the break from baseball as a young kid. And I just remember him saying like, we're not doing that again. You need to play all the sports. You need to have your breaks and have your, you know, your other sports. So I played football, uh, I played tackle football. I played basketball. I played baseball, I played volleyball when I was in school and uh, elementary school and middle school. Um, really wanted to play everything. I enjoyed skateboarding. I enjoyed everything. So my, and my parents encouraged me to play everything. Hmm. So, uh, so for you, while growing up, what, what made you choose baseball at the end of the day? And um, who was that one person that, uh, that you looked up to in the sports industry also? Well, what made me choose baseball was that that's what I really loved. I enjoyed, I enjoyed playing football. I enjoyed basketball. And I think that both sports are very crucial in developing athletes, um, football for toughness. I think mental toughness, just for grinding, just creating a tougher person. I think basketball probably has the most athletic human beings in the world. So I think it creates better hand-eye coordination and baseball was just, I don't know. It was just what I love. It's what my dad loved. And that's who really inspired me. My dad, my dad uh, played a little bit of college ball and it was something that we enjoyed together or something that we enjoyed going to the games. He had angel tickets, season tickets my whole life. And so we'd go as a family we'd go just me and my dad or whoever, but I had a ton of support from my dad, my mom, my siblings, I mean, everyone really supported me throughout my life and my career. Hmm. Well, let's, let's talk about that for a second. So I want to fast forward a little bit to kind of where you are now. And, you know, when you were in the major leagues, what was that feeling like knowing that you would accomplish those goals? Did you have flashbacks to sitting in the stands as a little kid and wanting to be that player? And what was that feeling like initially for you? Yeah, so I would say there were plenty of times where, you know, right before the game, right when we were about to take the field, that I'd be sitting on the on the bench, kind of on the top or on the upper part of the bench and looking out into the field and just in my mind thinking, like, I'm really here. Yeah. Like, I made it. Like, I'm here. Um, and people can say that, nah, it doesn't happen. It's a lie. Everyone, it's a dream for everybody. I think that, you know, we, in our minds, we, we create it and we we push for it as athletes. But still, when you're there, I can remember being there, and, you know, standing next to Ryan Zimmerman or Jason Wirth or the, as a very, very young player or sharing the field and having Chase Utley, you know, slide into second and Chase Utley's there. And it was like, oh, man, I'm standing next to him. Like, <laughs> you know, like yeah, you expect to be there. You work for it to be there your whole life. But then when you're actually there, it's still like it's just still a shock. Hmm. So for you, obviously, uh, 
<clears throat> you made your major league debut in uh, 2010 with the Nationals. So what was that like? How great for you that the Nationals gave you the first opportunity to start your career? And like you just said, you just mentioned Jason Worth. <clears throat> and then uh, and then there was other great players like Bryce Harper you played with eventually. So uh, what was that like in, in Washington experiencing the fan base there? Oh, it was great. The, um, the Washington Nationals an organization treated me very well. They were extremely good to me. Uh, from the GM to our ownership to our fans. I had great support from our fans. Uh, I always felt like I had a bunch of support from our GM and from from our ownership. So I, I absolutely love that organization. It was it was great experience. Uh, very, very bittersweet when being traded. So, um, but I, I loved it there. Uh, wouldn't ask for, you know, another organization to be drafted by, I guess. And as far as my first day in the big leagues, my first day in the big leagues, um, sitting there next to Adam Kennedy, Adam Dunn, yeah. Ryan Zimmerman, Ian Desmond, wow. yeah. you know, all these guys, you know, Yvonne Rodriguez, Pudge, our catcher. Yeah. So, you know, Hall of Famer. I watched AK Kennedy play my whole life in Anaheim. Yeah. And, um, I was going to get my first at bat. I was in the hole and, uh, Nigel Morgan charged the mound. So <laughs> yeah, the Niger Morgan charged the mound in, my, in, in Miami was actually my debut. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> just, yeah, that <laughs> just, a, just a follow up uh, with Ryan Zimmerman. What was it like playing with him and seeing him still go at it with the same team? And uh, what did he mean to you as a player? And mean, what, what, what has he meant to the city of Washington? Obviously, they got their World Series title a couple years ago, too. Well, Ryan, I think that was his dream was to – to sign with whoever would drafted him and stay there his whole career. So he got to live his dream, he got to play at home, close to his family, where his wife's from. He's a great person. Um, his wife, great family. His wife's a great woman. His mom and dad, great people. Uh, they were always very, very nice to me, very welcoming. And Ryan, for me, when I was young, was the guy who took me and, you know, bought me my first suits. Mm. Um, I, I can't say anything, you know, bad about Ryan. I can't even think anything bad about Ryan. Just a, just a great human being, great person. And, and I was so excited to watch him and my friends that were still in Washington win that World Series. Right. You know, not being part of it, you know, that's just the way baseball goes. But to be, to to be able to see some of your friends enjoy that is, uh, it's a lot of fun. I want to kind of. Uh you know, go back to the last question I asked about being that kid in the stands. Obviously not this year, but at some point you saw your kids in the stands. How much did that mean to be able to see your own kids kind of as you? And what do you tell them about accomplishing their goals one day? My kids are young, so I have a four and two year old. Okay. Um, as of right now, the way I look at it is part of the reason I'm still playing is because I want them to understand that part of my life a little bit right um, I don't want to be retired and have them looking at me like what'd you do I see we see all these pictures we see jerseys baseball cards your buddies like but I want them to understand part of it my four-year-old has started to really grasp the idea of what you know what I did my two-year-old is obviously a long ways away but um you know when I when I have them playing sports outside I really want them to play everything. I, I enjoy playing everything with them and I will never make them solely focus on one sport. Um, especially right now with my, with my four-year-old because he's doing a little bit more than what my two-year-old is and he's starting to understand more. I just, whatever he wants to do from hopping around from sport to sport in the backyard, I'm, I'm all for. So I don't know, it's hard, it's hard to relay a message to a four-year-old. I guess the biggest thing is like pay attention. <laughs> Because trying to keep a four-year-old's attention for more than three and a half seconds is tough, but uh, there's there's not much at this age that I could that I could really try to instill on them, I guess, other than just trying to be a be a good person. Mm. <clears throat> um, so I want to ask you about that trade, and obviously, um, it was, it, should, it must been a t must have been tough for you when you got traded from Washington to L.A. But being from California, what was your initial reaction when you got traded to the Angels, and what was your parents' reaction? when you got traded to the angels, because like you said earlier, uh, your parents got like angels tickets and what, what was their re reactions when you got traded? My parents were, were excited. You know, I think that they were kind of worried because 
I was always up in the air if I ever wanted to come home and play. I, I that was something that I enjoyed playing on the East Coast. Um, unless you play for the Dodgers or the Giants, I feel like on the West Coast, those you know those teams on the West Coast have you know generational fans like the East Coast does, and you have those fans that are diehard fans. You have the fanatics that's not the case everywhere in the West coast. It's a different atmosphere. It's a different pressure. And I enjoy the East coast. I enjoy that type of baseball. I enjoy that atmosphere. My, so my mom and my dad were very happy. I think my family was happy. My wife, we're all from there. So, you know, we live six or seven miles from Anaheim stadium. Um, so everyone had decided it was more bittersweet for me. I was kind of frustrated um, to be honest. I, I, I didn't really, I didn't really want to leave my teammates. There was a lot of comfort playing with my teammates. Um, it was, it was frustrating. And I, I kind of, I think I kind of showed that or probably said something that was, I was frustrated, but um, you know, it, it's part of the business, but it's hard for me as a ball player. Like I'm more of a purist. So I don't look at it as a, as a business. I look at it as this is what I love to do, you know, and, so I, I don't see it as a business. And so it's hard for me to accept it as a business sometimes. Why do you think it was, did, did it pan out to be the way that you expected it to be with the angels? Was it better? Was it worse? And uh, it just wasn't what I was used to atmosphere wise, whatever, everything was completely different from what I had come from. Um, but it was a, uh, it was a 180. I mean, it, it was complete different from anything I'd ever come from in professional ball. So I don't know, just did things didn't pan out and that's just the way it is. And that's just how careers go. So, um, so you went from playing with Bryce Harper and then you played with uh, now Mike Trout, one of the best overall hitters in the game, I think uh, today. Uh, so what was, what was the experience like playing with him and seeing him go about his business in the clubhouse? Um, now, I said this when I played with them. I said the biggest compliment I can give Mike Trout is the person that he is. He's a great person. Um, everybody knows what type of player he is. So the best thing I can say is he's an unbelievable person. So um, to watch him do work at the field was – he made everything look so easy. I mean, everything looked easy from – first day of BP and hitting home runs to running to it didn't matter what he did. It was just like a video game. It's like, you know, for everybody else, we're trying hard. And Mike was just not to say that he's working hard, but he, his work looks just that much easier than there. He's just that talented. So it was a lot of fun to watch. What's the best advice you've ever gotten from anyone in any level? Um, the, the first Probably week that I signed, I got sent to um, oh, the New York Penn League. And I was 21. And Dimitri Young was on a rehab assignment. Mm. And he told me, you know, he's like, I think you'll be in the big leagues in a couple of years. I was a high round pick. And he said, but don't ever look forward and don't ever look behind mm. you. He said, there's always going to be someone in front of you as you get into the big leagues. And he said, every year they draft someone to replace you. So if you're worried about someone in front of you and someone behind you, he said, you'll never get anywhere. So for me, that always stuck because it rang true every year. That's what happened. They, re they draft someone new every year to replace you. Hmm. <clears throat> so um, obviously you also play with the Mets, Mariners, and Tampa Bay Rays, but Looking back at your major league career and you over two over a 200 batting average, 98 home runs, 360 runs batted in, 64 stolen bases. Um, how grateful are you that you got to play the game that you love? And obviously, obviously continuing in a different league, but looking looking at your major league career, what would you say about it and how grateful are you? Uh, I would say probably offensively, I never accomplished anything close to what I, I wanted to do or, you know, my goals were. Um defensively I, I did a lot of what I wanted to do I was very happy with that part of my game uh, I was very happy with the you know the teams I got to play on championship teams winning the division you know a couple times going to the playoffs but um you know I, it, I'm very thankful for everything I got in this game very very thankful still thankful to have the opportunity to to come play in Mexico 
where we have where we have a very very good team, a lot of ex big leaguers on our team, and I don't know, I, I I enjoy baseball, I love playing, and to be able to be 33 years old and still playing, even though it's not in the big leagues, I still enjoy it, and I still get to have my kids watch online or, you know, they stream it to the TV and they can still watch me play, so I really enjoy it. Yeah, you you did save a lot of runs for those pitchers. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I mean, it, if I wasn't getting hits, no one else was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was your welcome to the league moment? <clears throat> welcome to the league moment. It was probably the first day when we were in a bench clear. It was probably like, hey, you're here. Welcome. Let's go. Um, I don't know. Welcome to the league moment. Nothing, nothing like sticks out of like, oh, that was – here you're here I guess probably walking into a clubhouse and seeing all the guys you watched on tv your whole life and now your teammates I I would probably say that was probably the biggest you know welcome to the big league moment um but yeah nothing nothing crazy nothing that I can sit here and, and point out I guess <laughs> um so I want to ask you about your transition to the Mexican league so how did that come about and <clears throat> what, 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 how did, what was the process like um, when you signed the deal with Me the Mexican League? And how obviously you said it's tough for your family not seeing you, but um, what, tell, me, tell me about the adjustment period for you when you, when you came. So to I came here in the end of 2018. I jumped around the minor leagues with a couple of organizations. Uh, it's just a really long, stressful, kind of aggravating year. So the GM here, Jose, had called me and said, you know, if something doesn't happen, just I'm here, you can come play. So, um, I, I think I got released from Philly. I want to say in triple a, and I called Jose and said, Hey, what's going on? You know, do you guys still need help? And he said, yeah. So I signed there in 2018. I came down here for about a month. It was kind of the last couple of weeks of the regular season. And we went to the playoffs. Hmm. Um, and after that year, I'd really just, I, one of those years where you just are frustrated with everything the fun of the game for me had really been taken out. And I came down here and the fans and the old school style of baseball and the energy that we were playing with every day, it was so much fun. It actually brought like love, like a playing back for me because, you know, it, it, it's, it's a different atmosphere. There's music, the people are hyped, they're paying attention to the game. Like, right. It was just so exciting. They treated you so well here. So I went back in 19, played in the States with the Mets at AAA, had a good right. year, couldn't get a job. 2020, COVID, Mexican League gets canceled. So I'm coming back here now. And uh, really, I mean, just stay in touch with, I stay in touch with our GM and he wanted me to come back. I wanted to be back. Like I said, we have a very, very good team. A lot of ex-big leaguers on our team. Yeah. So um, I don't know. It's, wasn't a, a tough decision to come play here at all. The toughest decision is is the time away from family. Mm -hmm. Is Mexico the, the favorite kind of place to play as far as exploring, doing things outside of the game? Well, I I think parts of it can be. You get to you go to places that you typically wouldn't go. You know, if you're going to go on vacation um i'd say the winter league is probably a little bit better as far as you know playing in more touristy cities the southern part of this league in cancun and stuff is is a very fun city you're going to play well you go to a lot of places up here where tijuana where uh monterey monclova um laredo i like we're in the northern cities I, I haven't really been to all of them and so we have saltillo and there's, I've heard there's some pretty places, but I've only been to a couple. Hmm. Um, so I don't know if there's much to do, but I don't think with COVID there's much to do right now anyways. And, right. and also, I don't know. I'll, I guess I'll find out this year. Yeah. So I actually, I want to ask you about your, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you're obviously your switch hitter. So um, what, what's it like being a switch hitter? And obviously uh, the last switch hitter I know is like Mark to share was another one, but, um, so for you, uh, what's it like being a uh, what's it like being a switch hitter? Uh, it's difficult. It's frustrating. It's difficult. A lot of swings. A lot of work. Second, you get one side going well. I felt like the other one wasn't. And then 
you get one side going well, like let's say I was hitting well left-handed, um, feeling good, but now I've gone through a stretch of, you know, a two-week period where I would face a left-handed starting pitcher. You know, now my bats, my timing is not exactly there. Yes, they're left-handed, but that's not the same, you know, swing or anything right-handed. So, um, it, it, it's – there's advantages to it, but there can be a lot of frustration and work to it. Cause you'll be there. I remember plenty of times where I'm sitting there going like, why is it I can do it this side? And I can't, yeah. why is it not transition, you know, to the other side? I, like, why, what's going on? So I enjoy it. I mean, it's definitely good. I want my, I'd like for my boys to do it, but there's a lot of frustration with switch hitting and there's a lot of swings with switch hitting. I mean, whatever you're going to put in left handed, you got to put it right handed. You know, um, so and the, the the weird thing is, like, as much hitting there is, like, when you go to BP, let's say you're taking six rounds, a normal person gets to take all six rounds from one side. You get three from each side, maybe. So you don't get quite the reps when it comes to, like, batting practice because of you got to cut things in half a little bit. All right. Well, double the extra hard work, double the threat, right? On the field, <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's always the hope. <laughs> <clears throat> what's next for you what Say do you want again. next i was saying what's next for you after baseball what's kind of the, the vision or even something you can do simultaneously with baseball i don't know i mean i haven't thought real deep into it um probably i own a farm and stuff so i kind of have retirement you know in a, in a place where it's kind of I've kind of got things rolling but I'd like to stay in the game. I don't know if I want to stay in the game on the professional side or stay in the game um, and help kids. I feel like I, I like watching our kids, you know, high school kids develop and, and help them and teach them stuff that they haven't heard at their levels. A lot of coaches right now that just teach or say whatever the online guru is saying. And so, I feel like if I can actually help someone and give someone maybe some real knowledge of stuff that I've seen or gone through or, you know, stuff like that, like, I feel like I can help them. I, I, I do enjoy coaching or passing my knowledge, even if it's not me that did it, watching guys do it, listening to my teammates explain what they did. I like to, to pass that knowledge on. Hmm. <clears throat> so uh, for you, uh, what, are you, what are you most looking forward to this season? Um, or when do you guys start the season uh, this year? We're starting in May. We're starting like mid-May. Um, I think May 20th, maybe a little bit before that. But I'd say the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, honestly, is just getting on the field. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know how many more years I get to, I'm get. i going to get to play. And so just being able to get on the field and, um, you know, get three, 400 at-bats, play in front of a crowd that yeah. loves us, that enjoys every single game um the energy stuff like that like that's that's kind of what i'm really looking forward to so they're a lot they allow fans they're gonna allow fans there in the stadium they haven't said for sure how many but they're saying anyway anywhere from like 30 to 50 percent okay sorry for the construction back down there it's like yeah. they're building something i don't know what's going on <laughs> let me ask about who is one person you've been able to met, meet that maybe you've got to outside of baseball maybe a celebrity someone in another sport <clears throat> i don't know i don't i don't know how long we've left in <laughs> um outside of the game man like someone famous or something like that someone you've looked up to someone i've looked up to yeah, it could be like in in any field. I mean, the the probably the coolest thing I have is probably the gold glove I got from Omar Vizquel. I had his glove remade with all the gold insignias on him, and had him sign it, and personalize it, and uh, that was probably that was like my my guy growing up. You know, um, I would say that. I would say I went, going to Long Beach State. I had a really really good relationship with Troy Chulowitzki. Right. And so, have, you know, being able to have that relationship throughout my major league career and have him help me be able to reach out to him whenever he, you know, he was always there to, to talk or help me is, that was probably, those two are probably 
the best things as far as that. I mean, I have teammates that, you know, I still am really, really close with Jason Worthy and Desmond um, that I've stayed close with, you know, really close with. So, but I don't know. I've never met, I, I mean, a star, I guess I, I, you know, I've never, never met, I guess a star in my mind. A star to me is the guys I looked up to playing to playing with or playing on TV that I finally got to meet. But um, yeah, I would say Omar Vizquel in that sense is probably the biggest one. Wow. That's amazing. Omar Vizquel, the goat. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so I got to ask you transitioning. I want to ask you about your podcast that you do now. I've seen, actually I reposted one of your interviews. It was with Brandon Laird. I was see a great major league catcher and he's your teammate now, right? In the Mexican league or no. So he's in Japan right now. Oh, okay. Brandon's in Japan. Um, we're supposed to both be on the Mexican Olympic team. So we're, oh. we're both supposed to be out there for the Olympics this summer. We grew up together playing together as, as kids. Um, but right now, yeah, he's in Japan. Yeah. So what, so how did this podcast come about? And obviously you do it with a couple people. And I, I think Garrett is one of them. So uh, what, what's it like doing the podcast with them and how often do you do your episodes and record and, 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 and how, when do you have your guests on too? <laughs> we were doing one or two a week. Um, the podcast is done now. We don't do it anymore. Huh. Um, we had a very, very unfortunate accident. Um, Garrett is a longtime family friend of mine. And the other guy on the podcast was his little brother, Seth. Mm -hmm. So we all known each other since we were, you know, <clears throat> seven years old, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, in January, Seth passed away in his sleep. Oh, no. None of us knew what happened. There's oh. no, there's, no one knows. Um, mm -hmm. So we were doing that. And that was something that we kind of just started doing in COVID because we all been together forever and um, Seth had done it professionally. He was in the minor leagues doing it and he was covering colleges and stuff to covering all sports. Mm. And um, Garrett just called me one day and just told me that Seth had passed away kind of, you know, when we were kind of doing stuff. And so um, no one, there's no foul play, nothing like that. Just mm. gone too soon. You know what I mean? Just a young kid that was, that just, you know, hopefully you know now he's up with god and but yeah so we we uh we stopped that wow so like my condolences go out to you guys i appreciate it i appreciate it yeah same here yeah that's that's a real tough thing man um i, I want to know for you throughout this whole process throughout everything you've been able to do what's your favorite part outside of the game, you know, through these years, what's your favorite part of maybe the off season, maybe post game, pre game. My favorite part is probably just um, in the off season, preparing, getting ready, going over stuff, lifting, looking at stuff. What do I need to try to adjust to um, that? But there's nothing like just playing in front of a good crowd, to be honest. Playing in front of good fans is probably the best thing about playing baseball. Having success is great, you know, but success is in the big leagues. But playing in front of the right fans, playing in front of the right crowd, they can allow for your success to manifest and become something really special. So fans, for me, are, are huge. Having the right crowd, the right people. So that's for me, as exciting as playing in front of good fans. I always say like St. Louis is an yeah. unbelievable place to play in front of. That's a visiting team too. They just, they love baseball. And so that was always just a place I would look forward to getting to. A uh, follow up on there, you mentioned preparing. The Olympics are coming up, but like you earlier mentioned, um, are, talk about that whole experience. Are you worried at all with some of the things that are going on around COVID and uh, what's that process looking like to, to get ready for Tokyo for the big stage? Uh, we don't know. We haven't had a final date on when everything is going to go. Um, we're just, we're just kind of, we're going to play in this league. The guys that are in this league, the guys that are in Japan, the guys that are kind of being selected to go to this team. We're just gonna, everyone's going to play and everyone's supposed to getting their bats, getting, you know, getting ready to go. But um, as far as COVID and all this stuff, that doesn't concern me. I'm not worried about it. I'm just, it's, <clears throat> It is what it is. You know, what are you going to do? So 
I just I'll, I want to go play. It's a once once in a lifetime opportunity to go to the Olympics, and so you know, do I want to take a vaccine? No, I don't want to take a vaccine. Do I want to wear a mask? No, I don't want to wear a mask. But if I have to do you know wear a mask to fly to Japan, I wear a mask. You know, but it's gonna be in a bubble, so I'm not really concerned about anything like that. Uh, I don't think they're allowing fans that flew in from out of the country to to see the event. So I don't think there's anything to be worried about personally. And yeah, that's gonna be exciting. I can't wait for that. And uh, I'm sure you guys have a talented team to go far in that tour in the Olympics. And um, obviously, you're gonna see a, a lot of great players there. And um, what, what's it gonna? It, it reminds me the Olympics does remind me of like All Stars. So for you, uh, what's it gonna be like just to play with other talented players from different teams? <laughs> It'll, it'll be fun. There's, I mean, a lot of the guys I'll, I have played with either in pro ball in the States, big leagues or against in this league. So I know most of them. Um, I think it'll be fun to play against the best of the best in Japan and Korea and whoever else qualifies. I know the USA is still trying to qualify. Um, I don't know if the DR qualified yet. I'm not hundred percent sure, but um, I think that will be fun. And they have great fans, Japan, Japan, like Korea, Taiwan, all of them have great fans. So I think going over there uh, for baseball will be actually a great experience, especially if it's going to be the last year of baseball in the Olympics, potentially. I mean, what a great place to play in front of with those fans. Yeah. I'm looking forward to, to trying to get out there too and hopefully cover that thing. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the big goal. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be fun. I, I don't know what fights, <laughs> the cost of fights are looking like right now. But, uh, <laughs> It'd be fun to get out there and do it. Yeah. So um, I usually do – we usually do this segment on the show called the Rapid Fire segment. Uh, you ready for this? Yeah. All right. Uh, Kawhi Leonard's laugh or Kevin Hart's laugh? Uh, Kevin Hart. Yeah. Favorite food? Mexican food. Um, so who is the funniest player, uh, teammate that you play with in the majors and, and not right now in Mexican League? <clears throat> In the big leagues, the funniest guy I played with. Oh God. I don't know. I've been I played with some good guys. Right now on my team right now, I'd say it's Alex Mejia. Oh. Playing the big leagues with the Cardinals. He's he's a funny dude. But in the big leagues, I don't know. I'd have to I have to think about that one a little bit. Anthony Rendon's a funny guy. He's sneaky. <laughs> Sneaky, quiet, fun, like, funny, really smart guy, but he he's a funny dude. And you know what's funny? Ironic, uh, he plays for the Angels now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Favorite dugout prank that you've either played or has been played on you? I don't, I don't, I don't think I ever have, to be honest. Really? I don't think it's been played on me. I don't think I've ever played anything on anyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Favorite memorable game that you played in the majors and uh, in Mexican League? <clears throat> favorite memorable game was 2012 when Jason Worth hit that walk off and I think oh. in game four game four playing against the Cardinals yeah that was like 12 13 pitch at bat Lance Lynn's throwing 97 you know keeps fouling him off fouling him off gets to like a 3-2 count and then blast one I was that was like that was one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of wow. out yeah, here um, I hit a home run in playoffs in 2018, and I've never heard like the, the way the crowd reacted, and I have it on video and stuff. It was like I, I go back and look at it all the time. It was it was a big home run. It was um, maybe the farthest ball I've ever hit in my life, and the way the crowd reacted was just unbelievable. It was I, don't know, it was, I can still just feel the feel it, you know, when it when it happened. Favorite game you've ever watched that you weren't a part of? Hmm. <laughs> Or a series? I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. Um, God, so many games I've watched. I, I, nothing. I don't know. I, there, there's too many games. Really, there's like, there's, there's just probably, honestly. Probably when the Nationals won the World Series. I was just so happy for my teammates. I, I think I just enjoyed that a lot just because, I don't know, like, like Zim. Like Zim has been there forever. I was just so happy to, to see him win a World Series. Rendon, who's a good friend of mine, like, 
I don't know. I just happy to see those guys win. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you consider being a manager in the future when, when you just after a baseball career? Yeah, I would consider it. Um, I don't know if the game is going that way. I feel like the game's gone all with computers. Probably have computers managing the game by that point. But um, huh. yeah, I would do it. I love baseball. I just, I don't like the direction it's going with all the numbers and stuff. You take the feel out of the game too much. There's certain things that can play with the numbers, but you're getting rid of too much. Like a computer can't compute feel. Right. Like never been in a situation before. I don't care how good you are. I've never been in a situation before. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I would love to, I would love to be in baseball. If I had an opportunity to manage the big league level, a hundred percent would probably jump on that. Um, but it's a, it's a different game now than when I, when I was in the big leagues. Now, let me ask you, do you feed off the crowd energy? Is that something that in yeah. certain places you do or normally do you ignore it? And does a yeah. cardboard cutout cut cut it? <laughs> what? Does a cardboard, cardboard no, cut it? Cutouts don't cut it for me. I was worried about that. They said potentially we wouldn't have fans down here. And I was kind of worried about that because so much emotion and so much feel and so much of your energy comes from going onto the field and, you know, fans calling your name or whatever, like that's part, all part of it. So I was really worried about the, the cardboard cutout deal in Mexico. I guarantee you they weren't going to do cutouts. They were just going to have to come in. So yeah, I was I a little saw, worried about that. I saw robots or something in, I think, Korea. Oh, wow. Yeah. They had like on a screen kind of like a big screen. Yeah. It was, it was different. Yeah. They had like a big screen kind of, I think how the NBA might do it. How they yeah. have like a live screen audience. Virtual, virtual fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> well, actually, uh, we had, I had, we had uh, Dan Shirley on the show, the former major league pitcher. He's in the yeah. KBO league right now. And he said that he, um, I, I think that he says a whole different experience with, with, with what they do there in Japan, he said. So it's crazy. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, I mean, he's in Korea, but I think they do it like, I'm sure they do way better job than what a lot of countries would be able to do yeah so. i know i talked to jj reddick when he was in the nba bubble and he was kind of talking about how weird that was and it was an adjustment at first but then i guess when you're in the bubble for that time you get used to it yeah yeah i mean i guess you get used to anything but it'd still be tough to get up every day and go play with, with no fans yeah, you start so. realizing how much fans mean to your game yeah right i think that gets pushed aside a lot i think a lot of Professional athletes start pushing fans away just because oh, it's annoying. I don't want to sign everything. I don't want to be bothered until it's time to play and there's no one there. Now who are you playing for yourself? You're just you're just playing. I don't know. You play for fans. That's part of that's part of what you do. So the last couple, I mean, before we get to the last two things, um, obviously opening day is starting this Thursday for Major League Baseball. Are you going to be watching opening day? Probably not. <laughs> no. 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 I've oh. got uh, Telemundo. And uh, Netflix, and that's kind of what I stay on. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know if I have MLB on my on my TV. Actually, a follow up. Um, have you? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know how to speak Spanish? Do you know the language there? No, can I understand some enough to get by and understand and get to to do what I want. But no, not nearly what I would like to. Where I'd like to be. Mm -hmm. Story on that. I was in Miami covering a Super Bowl, and every Uber driver spoke only Spanish, and. I've taken three years, but that doesn't no, no. prepare you for that. No. No, learning, learning your colors in Spanish in school doesn't get you by in a conversation. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So um, I want to ask you one more thing here before we get to the last few things. Um, are you concerning uh, – has any major league teams contact you, contacted your agent when you were – throughout um, when you were in Mexico? No. No, I, they, they have not. The, the, the game is in a different direction now. Um, I don't think that that's realistic for me to say that I'll be going back to, to organize baseball in the United States. Um, it's just where everything's at nowadays and COVID making it harder with MLB getting rid of 42 teams. Yeah. I mean, how hard are they going to make it on everybody to, to, to be well, in the game? I mean, to get rid of 42 teams, just to start off the top. I mean, that, that, killed baseball um it killed opportunity i should say so um no I don't, I don't foresee myself going back but i'm okay with that that's you know obviously i want to be in the big leagues longer but you got to accept it for what it is 
So the last two things here, our team is part of this huge uh, foundation called the Hugh Jackson Foundation. He's a former NFL coach, but he's trying to get back into coaching, but he's focused on this foundation. We're, we're ambassadors for them. We're trying to help help prevent human trafficking, making sure these kids stay safe and the community stay safe. So I'm going to send you the page. You can check it out. And um, cool. we're, really, we're really inspired to be part of it and helping them out with the foundation. And the last thing here, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and the center workers right now? Um, you know, I guess that, you know, thank you. Thanks for, thank you for um, being out there and, and putting yourself, I guess, at risk. Um, thank you for telling us the truth of what's going on. So we don't have to listen to news media outlets lie about everything. Um, so I guess thank you for being truthful and thank you for, for taking care of people to the best of your ability or the best of your knowledge. Yeah, well said. And there it is. This wraps up episode 728 with former major league player. Now he's playing in the Mexican league, uh, Danny Espinoza. Thanks for joining us today. And Vadan, thanks for joining too. Um, this has been a truly, a truly an honor for you, to, for you to join. And I'll be posting this on all social media formats. And like I said, we will, we will love to have you back as a returning guest so you can meet the full team. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Stay safe. All right. All right.